With several graphics cards now falling in price, it does seem like it is finally time to start considering upgrading your current gaming PC build again, but with so many GPUs to choose from, it can be quite difficult to know which graphics cards should you consider and which ones should you avoid. So which GPU should you buy in 2022 then? Well, in today's video, we're gonna look at the best budget GPU picks worth considering and to help us out, I've lined up a couple of popular titles. But before we dive into the gaming benchmarks, let me know in the comments guys, Nvidia or AMD, what GPUs do you recommend in 2022? So this is how this is gonna go down. First, we're gonna look at the best 1080p GPUs. And then we're gonna take a look at the best 1440p pick as well. Now before we go ahead and take a look at the best budget pick for 1080p resolution, let's first go ahead and take a look at the entire GPU lineup and what it currently looks like. Now as for Team Green, here is what Nvidia currently offers. So starting with the cheapest card first, we find the RTX 3050 coming in at $249. Next up we find the RTX 3060, the 3060 Ti, the 3070, the 3070 Ti, the 3080 as well as the 3080 Ti and finally the RTX 3090 with a price tag of a whopping $1500. Now as for Team Red, the lineup looks something like this. AMD is starting off the 6000 series with the RX 6400 and the 6500 XT coming in at $230 and finish up with the RX 6900 XT for $1000. Now, since most of you guys are here to buy cheap and affordable budget graphics cards, for simplicity, we're gonna be leaving out the more expensive $600 and above out of the benchmark section, which we gonna take a look at right now. So let's kick off the first test with the ray tracing benchmark in Call of Duty Warzone to get an idea how AMD stand versus Nvidia in terms of ray tracing performance. Now for this benchmark, I have included three GPUs for the current GPU lineup, but I also decided to throw in the RTX 2060 from Nvidia's last generation 20 series cards to get a sense how ray tracing has evolved from one generation to another. Now here we can also see how much performance you actually lose when activating ray tracing. Now as can be seen, the RX 6600 is taking a significant hit when RT is activated, but to be fair, that is true for basically all GPUs tested. Running the game at high settings 1080p results in 145 FPS on average for the 6600 and beats the RTX 3060 by a few FPS. However, when RT is on, Team Red is unfortunately losing to the RTX 3060. Metro Exodus is another game that utilizes ray tracing to create more photorealistic lightning and here again we can see how Team Red is struggling a bit when we activate the technology. Now as can be seen in traditional rasterization, the RX 6600 is trading blows with the 3060, however when those ray tracing light rays are filling up the screen, the RX 6600 is losing significant ground and are now performing more like the last gen RTX 2060 and this is unfortunately true for most games that supports ray tracing and I do think it is important to have in mind guys, AMD is highly competitive in traditional rasterization and can often beat Nvidia's counterpart in this department but they can't really match Team Green when it comes to ray tracing. Now to give you guys an idea how each card performs in more eSport like environment, let's take a look at the performance in Rainbow Six Extraction, running at 1080p very high graphics. Now as can be seen, all cards offers a playable experience, but if you're looking for that buttery smooth 200fps experience, the RTX 3070 is your only option. Keep in mind though, you can always drop the settings a bit and be able to run the game at a steady 144 FPS with just an RX 6600. Now to give you guys a better idea how the newest lineup of cards performs in Dying Light 2, here's 1080p at high graphics. Now except for the 3050 who fails to reach the magic 60 FPS mark, the game runs brilliant on all GPUs tested. 
Again, if we take a look at the pricing, including some of the most popular last gen and current gen GPUs, Nvidia is the obvious pick if you care about things like ray tracing and DLSS technology. There is simply nothing AMD can do to compete with Nvidia's current gen GPUs. And if you're looking for a good balanced 1080p card for both competitive gaming and AAA gaming with ray tracing, the RTX 3050 and possibly the 3060 uh, are the ones to consider. The cheapest 3050 and 3060 are currently selling for $339 and $440 respectively, which yeah, unfortunately make them a hard pill to swallow as both cards are still between 32-30% to 30 more expensive than what they should be. Still though, both offers good competitive balanced performance packed with rich features such as DLSS that you may want to include in your next budget gaming PC build. So this is definitely a tough situation. Now, if you're willing to try your luck on the used market, you can snag an RTX 2060 or a 2070 for $280 and $360 respectively on eBay. These two cards are well worth considering and still offers great ray tracing performance and impressive technology such as DLSS as well, even though they're now a few years old. Now that being said guys, if you don't want to deal with the second hand market and you don't care too much about ray tracing and only looking for the best bang for your buck performance, the RX 6600 is your go to, right now selling for $300. And this is by the way $30 below MSRP, makes the RX 6600 the ultimate 1080p GPU in 2022. But let's say you have a 1440p monitor or perhaps a high refresh rate 1080p screen and you want something a bit more powerful, what do you look for and how much do you need to spend? Well, in order to reach a respectable frame rate in the current most popular games in 1440p, I recommend spending between $380 to $400 at least. Now, GPUs that falls into this category includes the 2060 Super, the 2070, the 2070 Super, which all can be found on eBay below $400. Now the RTX 3060 is finally starting to drop in price quite significantly and can also be found near the $400 mark, although still being $70 over MSRP. Now taking a look at the benchmarks, starting with Rainbow Six Extraction, at 1440p all cards offers a playable experience. Again, if you're happy to drop the settings a bit, you should expect 100 FPS plus for all GPUs in this test. Halo Infinite is however a little bit more demanding and here I would suggest to at least consider an RX 6700 XT or an RTX 3070 for a smooth playable experience and the same goes for Dying Light 2 as well if running the game at high to very high settings is your main goal. Now the best pick for this category is probably buying used and I would say if we're able to snag an RTX 2070 Super for around $350 you're getting a killer GPU for a competitive price for sure. But if you're looking for a new GPU and you really want a 30 series card from Team Green, I would look into the RTX 3060 Ti. However, there is a big but. The cheapest one currently sits around $560, which is about 40% over MSRP, so not really a good deal to be frank. And knowing that a new generation of cards are planned towards the end of 2022, makes me want to avoid recommending any card currently selling over MSRP. MSRP. For Team Red, we are looking at a different, much better situation. Here I would look into the RX 6600 XT, which can be found for as low as $380 or perhaps the RX 6700 XT for $500. Now these are currently sitting at MSRP pricing and offers great 1440p performance. So with that all being said, what do you prefer, Nvidia or AMD? If you're looking for the best budget 1080p gaming PC and wonders what a $500 budget would take you, I have a video linked up down below that is showing you exactly what to expect in terms of gaming experience. Thank you so much for watching this video.